Hey guys, welcome back to Shop from the Garage. We are back working on this 1991 Mazda Miata MX-5. And um, yeah, um, last time we replaced the clutch master cylinder and the clutch slave cylinder. And today we are going to replace the timing belt we're going to replace the upper and lower radiator hoses, uh, valve cover gasket, crank position sensor seal, and yeah, I do have two cam seals now. So last time we were waiting on one of these cam seals, so we're going to replace the cam seals and the crank seal, and uh, we're just we're going to make it all better. So let's come on, let's get into this. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this valve cover off and we are going to replace the seal. So back here, they call it the crank position sensor. <laughs> it's at the back of the camshaft. I don't know why, it's, it's just a weird thing. And they, yeah, in, the, in the book, they actually um, some places in the book, it actually references that as a distributor cap. Um, yeah, um, but um, yeah, I double check, triple check. They call it a crank position sensor. It's at the back of the camshaft. We're gonna get this uh, valve cover off. We're gonna get this off, replace the seal in there, and then we're gonna start working on all this, pulling all this apart, draining the coolant so we can get this timing belt off. And um, it should be easy, we'll see. Let's get to it. All right, uh, look at this. So all of this uh, there was oil all over the place i should have shown this to you first um, just didn't think about it i sprayed all this stuff down with uh brake clean to clean it all off that's why it's wet like that it's this uh bunch of oil and brake clean on the ground there um but uh yeah we're gonna be replacing the seals and these belts these are belts are in good condition still so uh, we're gonna reuse the the drive belts on it <clears throat> look at this so this happens sometimes these rubber uh, grommets right here these are pretty pretty stiff you know uh, on both sides on this one but what will happen is uh, you get a pretty good oil leak and it just drains all down on top of this uh, rack right here steering rack these bushings they start to whelp up from the oil and they get soft and then the rack moves Whenever you turn the steering wheel, the rack moves and it gives you a lot of, uh, a lot of slop in your steering, you know. Um, so if you have one of these cars, any car actually, if you have a car that's leaking oil and it has a rack and pinion and your steering seems like it's got a lot of slack in it, uh, there's a possibility that those bushings are, they're just all warped up and stuff from the oil. It just can't stand the oil um, getting in them. And uh, so that, that's something to check, you know. Uh, and right now we're gonna drain the uh, coolant and pull this plug out right here. Hopefully I don't break it, cause it's plastic. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna drain the coolant, get the coolant draining, and then I'll bring it down. Cause uh, later on we're gonna be taking these belts off and we're gonna take all this, all this stuff off. Hopefully we don't have to move these AC hoses, but we may have to kind of relocate them just a little bit. Uh, we'll see. Um, and sometimes that, that bolt, right there in the that um, I don't know if you can see that the the bolt right here uh, crank bolt it's on there pretty tight and uh, there's a special way to get that off um, if uh, just a wrench can't get it off um, and uh, we don't have the tool to stop the thing from cranking over I'll show you if, if need be 
you know, we'll do it. I'll show you. Uh, anyway, I'm um, gonna get this uh, coolant draining and uh, get this thing down and start tearing it apart. This is the crank sensor or whatever you want to call it. The thing at the back of the cam, you know, that we need to reseal. I sprayed all this down with brake clean so it's just not so nasty. Uh, the ignition coil packs and I need to get this loose right here. I don't have to completely take it out but I need to get it loose so I can push it back so we can get the valve cover off. So over here way down inside there there's a bolt that i need to get loose it's way inside there so that this can move back <clears throat> you see this right here so if you're working on one of these take this out all right because this right here they break real easy i guarantee you i guarantee <laughs> that you're gonna lean on this thing and you're gonna break it it just happens every time so you're like no no i can avoid it no no you can't you will lean on it and it just takes a second and snap and it's broken and uh so yeah just take them out um i've broken quite a few of those over the years and i haven't done one broken one in a long time of course you know i don't work on these things every day so uh let me get that cool pack out get this valve cover off and then we can work on getting that crank sensor thingamabob deal over there off. Okay, check this out. So that is 165,000 miles. Yeah. Serious? Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. This thing is clean. Here's our timing belt. Doesn't have a lot of slack in it. This is what we need to pull off next. And it has this one bolt right here in the side and of course we ain't got a lot of room up against the firewall here but uh this uh, i need to mark this i'm gonna put a mark across here because it can only go once we get it off uh the shaft can only go one way because it is like a distributor and uh that thing is timed and you can adjust it to adjust the timing um the ignition timing so we don't want to get this off because then we have to go in and adjust the ignition timing and stuff, which we could do that uh, if we really need to, but why, you know, if we don't have to. Um, so I'm gonna put a mark across here. I may stake it, you know, something more permanent so it doesn't rub off. And then I got this one bolt right here and I take that bolt out and then we should be able to pop this thing off and uh, we replace that seal, put it back on, put it right back in place, and then move on to this. So let me get this off and see what happens. 
Okay, this is what I mean by staking this. I'm gonna use this chisel. I'm just gonna put a mark right across here. So something that won't rub off. One more time. So that kind of worked. Give it one more shot. Nope. That didn't work. <laughs> okay, it did work. There's a good mark going right across right there. So I am going to loosen this. I'll try and loosen it. If it'll loosen, it, if I can do it without hurting myself, because. I just, lately, I've been busting my hands on everything. Okay, it's coming out. So, you can see how Easily that comes off right there. This, uh, if I can get this thing out of here, I can show you. Um, this right here is offset. So it doesn't come centered. Hopefully I can focus in on this. So this going straight through here does not, is not exactly centered. So if this were to turn around this direction, it wouldn't fit on there. Right, so it only goes one way. So we wanna keep it like that so we can get it back into place. And all we're doing is we're replacing this seal right here, this O-ring. So, uh, and, it, and it is hard, it's, let me see. If I try and get it off, yeah, see, it doesn't stretch at all, not much. Uh, I can get this out of here. Okay. Let's see. Oh yeah, see it just broke. So yeah, that that seal, it was too too stiff and uh was not sealing anymore. So um And right there, there's my mark, right there. Um, okay, yeah, let me uh, clean this up over here and let me get the new uh, O-ring. Okay, this new uh, seal on there, I put a little bit of oil around it just to kind of lubricate it so I could stick it on there. Uh, let me see if I can get this down in there. How did I get it out? Oh, see, then that, that's not good. The thing is rotating. I think it rotated. Um, yeah, I think it rotated when I took it out. Well, I mean, y'all remember how it was, right? So you'll just let me know if it's wrong. Because I think, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it was like that. So, let's see. I, I can see the notch right here where the thing goes. Let's see if it lines up in there. Uh, this may take a couple shots to get this in. Uh, let's see if I can shine a light inside there. So, okay. I can kind of see. It should line up right there, unless I got it wrong. There it goes. Okay, and there's my line going straight across. So I need to line that up perfect, and that should be perfect right there. So I get this bolt back in, and we'll be done with this.
Okay, so now that we can see down in here, let me show you what's going on. This wiring harness we need to get loose. We need to get this off. And this off of the power string. That came right off. And uh, of course we need to get these belts off. We need to get these hoses off. These hoses aren't in, way, in the way of getting these belts off, but they are in the way when we need to pull this timing belt completely off. Um, also, I'm probably going to remove these cooling fans. Um, I don't need to remove them. Maybe I'll try it without, but if you see this pipe right here, this is the stabilizer bar and it is right in line uh, if not, you know, maybe just a little bit below that crank bolt right there. So it's actually in the way. So I have to lift it up, take the um, stabilizer bar bushings, take these loose on both sides and uh, drop this down. It doesn't have to go far. It just needs to drop down just a little bit. Um, let's see if we can, I can show you. Hey, we got a couple bolts that we need to get loose to um, to get this pulley loose from that center hub and then of course we need to get this bolt loose and that's the big one trying to get that loose is a real pain there's a trick <laughs> that hopefully it works and uh, I'll show you uh, but first we need to get these these belts off uh, loosen the power steering pump um, to get that belt off, loosen the alternator to get that belt off. And um, get these hoses off right here and just start working all the way around start trying to get this cover off. There's this cover here and there's a small side cover here um, because this right here, this pulley, this is a water pump, that pulley's got to come off. And then there's a uh, bottom cover down here so bottom cover side cover upper cover so those need to all come off and then of course we need to get this thing in time uh, before we take it loose and uh, these things come in different forms and fashions and I'll show you that once we get there uh, but uh, yeah let's uh, start getting all this stuff off and uh, see what happens So y'all can get a look at this where we're at. I can even get this camera down in here. Um, so I got this uh, middle cover off. Here's the tensioner, tensioner pulley. Oh, you can see the spring right there. We're gonna be replacing that. Um, and we still have the lower cover we need to do. We need to get this pulley off there is a pulley a i think they call it a dowel boss or something like that um so we should be able to take uh, some bolts off of here and pull this pulley off and um after that uh depending on the model sometimes uh, you can get that 
pulley off like that and um, then you can um, get the belt out from under it and you can replace the belt like that but we need to pull that thing off because we're going to be replacing the crank seal uh, so we need to get the whole uh, gear and everything and the same thing with these right here uh, these need to come off because we need to replace the seal underneath there so before we continue on with this I am going to get the thing up in the air and I'm gonna um, get the uh, stabilizer a bar and get it down just a little bit so we can get to those bolts a little bit easier and then um, we're gonna have to get that big bolt loose and we'll see how what happens and um, let's get this thing up there and, and try and figure it out um, just to let you know I do have the thing on the lift right now it's off the ground because uh, it's just it's such a short vehicle you know and I my back can't handle it you know bend it down all day long trying to uh, get to this so I just lifted it up to a, a height that was easier for me to uh, manage um, so let me get it up and uh, get that uh, stabilizer bar uh, loose pulled down and uh, see what it looks like Okay, uh, this is what we're looking at here. Um, I got these bolts out. I figured no sense in showing you, it's just pulling four bolts out. So uh, right here and right here so to get this uh, stabilizer bar down. And as you can see, it didn't come down very far. It's hitting the, the uh, AC line right here. Um, but it's just enough that we can get to that one bolt right there. Um, if I can show this to you. Um, <clears throat> so there's four bolts, four 10 millimeter bolts that we need to take out. We take those four bolts out and this pulley should come off. And then we got the big one in the middle. And that is holding what they call the, the uh, pulley boss. Um, so we need to get that off. And that looks like somebody has had a wrench or something on this before. Um, this timing belt may have been replaced before. I would not be surprised. Um, so hopefully that thing's not too tight. I guarantee I'm not going to be able to just turn this thing and, and get it to come off. Even with, uh, there's no, there's no room in here to put like an impact or anything like that. Um, I do have a, well, I don't know if this thing would work. Uh, we could try it if it fits, <clears throat> but if not, you know, there's a trick uh, to getting this off uh, and hopefully it works because if it don't work, we ain't going to get it off. So Mazda uh, has a special tool that goes onto the uh, flywheel and it holds the flywheel um, so that the engine doesn't spin and then you can break that loose. We ain't got that tool. We haven't had that tool in years, you know. <clears throat> and no sense in getting one because uh, these things they just don't come through you know very often like hardly at all anymore so uh, I'm gonna get this thing down um, and try and figure out a way that I can show you how I can take those bolts off I'm just gonna get them from the top with my air ratchet and uh, then uh, we'll pull the uh, lower timing cover off and then try and figure out uh, the special trick for getting that uh, that pulley boss bolt out um, so let's do that okay where were we before I was rudely interrupted for the past hour let's see if we can get these bolts off well that is tight and of course the thing's gonna spin on me. see it
All right, uh, let me see. Let me get this cover off. And uh, you can see how this thing, it goes all the way down, so there's no room to fit a timing belt underneath there between the oil pan and this thing right here. So we're gonna have to get this bolt out, you know, no matter what. We gotta get it out anyway, because we gotta replace the seal. Um, we got a, like three bolts, I think. No, I got like two bolts, two, or, oh yeah, three bolts holding this on. Let me set this aside and get those out. I'm gonna take this cover off. Y'all can even see anything. Um, okay. Let's get up here. Get this thing's in the way. And yeah, this cover has definitely seen better days for sure. Uh, so it's parts of it that are all coming apart because of the oil that's gotten on it. And the best we can do is just kind of clean it, and stick it back on, you know. Uh, but this is what we're looking at. Um, yeah, we gotta get that big bolt down out. So. Let's try doing that next. Okay, so that bolt right there is a 21 millimeter or 13 16 if you're American. <laughs> but um, I can't find um, a 3 8 drive 21 millimeter or 13 16 uh, socket right now. I may have to borrow one later. But even, you know, if I did, I couldn't show you this trick. Um, hopefully this trick works, otherwise it's not <laughs> worth showing. Um, so what I'm going to do is I turn this a little bit to try and line it up. See how it's got the flat top on top. I have this breaker bar right here. And uh, let me see if I can show this to you. Right here. In this section right here, this is uh, where the stabilizer bar bolted on, but there's this little section right here, right? And I can see, yeah, right there. So I'm going to stick this breaker bar right into this section, right there, All right? Let me get the camera out of the way. And I'm going to bring it down and stick it on here. And this is why I had to line it up so that this would go on. So this is in here, that's sticking right there. It's not going anywhere, right? And then I'm gonna take a bunch of these rags and I'm just going to try and just shove them down. Oh, let's see if I can get them in here. Like in the back side of this breaker bar just so the thing doesn't pop off and you know, hurt something or someone. Um, okay, so you can probably figure out what I'm doing. Um, so, yeah, this thing's got a brand new starter on it. You know, I, I just noticed that it's got a new starter, so the starter's good. <laughs> and uh, it, it would help to have a good starter, I guess, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the starter to break that bolt. I've done this many, many times, no problem at all. As long as we got enough battery power and the starter's good enough, uh, what I'm gonna do is I got that thing set in there. I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna crank the vehicle. I'm just gonna bump it, you know, it's just gonna crank, it's gonna go pow, pow, and then the bolt right there should be loose and then we can pull it out the rest of the way. I'm not gonna continue to crank on it, you know, I don't want this thing cranking, you know, with this uh, belt exposed anyway. 
but um, uh, let me see if I can set you up because <laughs> I've never actually seen it happen. I've just gone around, uh, cranked it and came back and uh, yeah, it's loose. So um, let me set you up so you can see what's going on. Hopefully things don't go flying and people don't get hurt. So um, <laughs> let's uh, see what happens. Okay, here I go. I am going to crank it over. I can get in here. Put my foot on the clutch. Cranking. Did it do anything? Oh. Did anybody die? It looks like something happened, but I'm not sure the thing came loose. I don't think it came loose. Uh, no, it didn't. Let's try it again. Let's see if we can do it without everybody falling down and dying. Right, here it goes. Apparently it's not gonna work <laughs> this time. Let me see what I can do. Okay, that time it worked. Uh, I just had to put a jump box on the battery. <laughs> um, and it had enough oomph. Um, I'm sure that you saw that the thing turned. So um, that's cool. We got the thing loose. So we can move on. Uh, let me get this thing out of here and we will pull that off. Okay, you can see that this thing is nice and loose now. So, I need to get this off. And this piece is held on to the end of the crankshaft um, and the, um, the pin, the, um, and this uh, key is in here, right here. So, I need to kind of pry on this. Let's see if I can get it to come out without hurting anything. Come on, get out of there. I don't want to pull the, the sprocket off. I just want to get this piece right here off. Come on, I thought it was coming off. And of course I threw it on the floor. There's the key. Sticks out like that. Um, so we will be pulling this thing off, but we need to get the timing belt uh, 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 set. Um, we need to get it set in time before we actually pull the belt off. So let's do that. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this tool. This is not what it's meant for. I'm gonna stick that there and I'm gonna put the bolt on just to take up some space. And uh, this will allow me to turn the uh, crankshaft but not get the bolt like super tight so we get to do the trick again just to get it off. And that's gonna allow us to rotate the crankshaft to the point where everything is in time. It's just past its time. I don't know if you can see that right there is the, the mark should line up with that mark. Um, I'll show you where these marks are. Okay, if you look on this sprocket, hopefully you can see it. There's a little I right there. And there's an E right there. E for exhaust, I for intake, 
there it is again. These sprockets are, I think, identical. I there, E there. This is the intake cam, and this is the exhaust cam. So the E should be sitting straight up on the exhaust side and the I should be sitting straight up on the intake side. It's also showing this, and I don't know if you can see this, right here, you see this, this little uh, raised area of this back cover? I'm gonna see if you can even see that. So right over here, there is an I stamped in it. Right over here, there's an E stamped in it. Now this is the intake side with an E. This is the exhaust side with an I. And that's so that these things can line up. So this I right here should line up with this piece right here. And this E over here should line up with that piece. So we're just barely past it. Down here, hopefully you can see this. There's a mark right there that should line up with the mark that's down in there. So I'm gonna see if I can tighten this nut right here, or bolt, I mean, and then back it up and then bring it forward again to line them up. So let me try that. Okay, got a 21 millimeter socket on here. I'm just gonna kinda bump it like that. Hopefully that's tight enough that I can slowly turn it and it's turning it backwards. So, uh, just to let you know, uh, some Mazdas, um, Mazda says do not ever turn our engines backwards. And the reason why is because they don't have keyways and keys, you know, uh, in their sprockets. Um, they're, uh, they're torqued down and that torque actually keeps them in place, <laughs> believe it or not. So if you had turned it backwards and you actually accidentally loosened the crank bolt, the entire engine can go out of time. And those are uh, time and chain engines, uh, Mazda 3, Mazda 6, CX-7, I mean, uh, uh, vehicles like that, time and chain vehicles. So I'm gonna turn this, I, I went past, so I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna line this up. So it's right there. From my eyeball, it looks it looks good enough. <laughs> so, and we got we got the E straight up on the exhaust cam. We got the I straight up on the intake cam. So uh, that's that's what we need to do. Um, there is a tool. We don't really need it. And we're probably not gonna use it. We might use it in the end. This is an old tool. I've had it for very, 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 very many years. Um, and this is made to go across. I don't even know if it works on this. It might not even work. No, it's, it goes on the inside. Come on, get on there. Goes on the inside. So let me see if I can. Come on, back it off. I need to bring it in. Oh, this right here is spun. Okay. So it's on the inside, yeah. Just like that. So it sits on the inside of the of the gears on both sides. And you turn this and you tighten it, not too too tight, but you turn this and it tightens and it holds these in place and holds it in place so you can take the belt off, put the new belt on, get everything done, take this off and you're in perfect time. But it's not gonna do us any good because um, we're gonna be pulling these sprockets off. Um, so once uh, we get the thing set up, we might use this to hold it, it depends. Uh, when I pull this belt off, uh, these uh, these might turn a little bit so uh, what matters is uh, and you can't really tell but right inside there is the dowel pin for the camshaft on both they're sitting straight up straight up and down so even without the uh, sprocket on there we'll know you know where it's supposed to be so let me 
get this time belt off and we'll start uh, pulling this apart. Okay, let's see what happens when I loosen this. Watch your fingers. Okay, they moved just a little bit. That's fine. Um, okay, I need to take these bolts out. I have this 15 16 wrench, which actually fits on the back of the cam right here. So there's a spot on the cam Just to show you, there's a spot on the cam right there. Well, there's one right here. It's a little, they, they call it a hexagon or whatever. And uh, the, the wrench, five, 15 16 wrench fits right on there. So I can hold this thing straight. See if I can put this back where it was. Um, and then I can get something on here and loosen this up. Okay. And you can see the dowel pin is sitting straight up right there. This has two areas where the dowel pin can go in, so we need to make sure that we get it right back in the same spot. And it's not too hard to figure out. This is intake I right there. This one goes to the E right there. So we're on the intake side, so we're gonna use the one that's facing the I, okay? And I guess this, might as well get this other one off. Since we're here, might as well just do it. Come on, hold it, hold it. Okay, let me get something that has a little bit of power. is on the E right there okay so now we need to get these seals out these right here might as well do these first because that one is gonna be a fight um, so let me uh, get the seals out and then we'll put the new ones in okay so um, little disclaimer here don't do what i do okay um you want to be able to get the seal out but you don't want to scratch the surface on the inside here right more importantly you don't want to scratch the surface where the seal actually rides on the camshaft because if it scratches it's just going to leak so we try to go down into here and pry it off, which usually doesn't work too good. And this is it's an old stiff screwdriver that I've you know ground down you know over the years. So usually I try and come in here like this, kind of hit it, kind of try and get it off without gouging the inner part of this or this right here. But a lot of times what I've done because this part of the seal, and I don't know if you can see this. This part of the seal is the weakest part. And you can actually get under here and pry this thing up. And it usually works better, but do not gouge the camshaft. Because if you do, it's all for nothing. You need to replace the camshaft. So if I come in here, push this thing up. Try, well, I was trying to work it back, but this thing's in the way. Let me grab another part of it. Like I said, don't. I'm not letting this part sit down. I'm actually 
laying it right on the outside here so I don't gouge the actual ceiling area of it. And you can see it pop out just like that, right? It just seems to be the easiest way. It's the wrong way to do it. Like I said, don't do what I do, okay? But it just has worked for me over the years and there's no gouging. There's no gouging or anything like that. And, and you can see where I came in right there. And if we look at the top of this, nothing has been gouged in the area where it actually seals. Okay, so that's the most important thing. No, nothing gouged on the inside of this, nothing gouged around the cam. And that's just how I take the seals out. Uh, let's see if we can get this one. I'm gonna do the same thing. Pick an area, make sure that I'm going up and not into the camshaft. Kind of, kind of good, because it's a soft area of the seal. I'm gonna push it in, and then as I'm pushing down, rolling it that direction. Okay. I'm gonna grab it again. And it just starts popping out right here. Just let it do its thing, let it come out. see that you can see right here is where I was leveraging it not inside there and you can see where the seal runs so you do not want to gouge that okay um, so I'll, I'll tell you just a little quick story uh, when I worked for GM there was a technician that replaced a rear main seal on a uh, 350 and he took the rear main seal out that way, only he gouged the crankshaft. And uh, uh, me and the shop foreman tried many times to try and repair it. And uh, <laughs> um, and uh, it, it, to no avail, it, it's just impossible to repair unless you weld it up and then have it machined, you know? Might as well just replace the crankshaft and that's what we ended up doing. Um, but uh, yeah, so you definitely don't want to mess up that surface right there. So let me get these seals in and then we'll mess with the one that we got to fight. Okay, the first thing that I want to do is uh, just get in here with this rag and just kind of clean inside there. Make sure that if I get any dirt or anything, I, I get it out. Uh, it's pretty clean. I just want to just be sure. And just a rag. I'm not sticking a tool in there that can gouge it or anything like that. Okay. And let's put the seal on. So, whenever you put the seal on here, you make sure that you don't roll the seal. And what I mean by roll is if this were to roll back and fold back, then it's just gonna leak. And there's a spring in there. I don't know if you can see that, there's a spring right there. And you don't wanna let that spring out. Of course, if they do accidentally pop out, you can usually pop them back in as long as they're not damaged. Uh, you wanna put a little bit of uh, oil inside here. You don't wanna get it out here because you want this to seal. Uh, but put a little bit of oil. I'm gonna stick my finger down here and get a little bit of oil. And I'm just gonna kind of roll it around on the seal, the sealing part of it. Stick this on and make sure 
that does not roll the seal and it's it's going in there so just kind of push it in place the best I can with my fingers and I got this brass hammer right and I mean if I were to accidentally hit something it's it's soft metal but it's got a little bit of weight to it you know so it lets me smack it in place right and I want to go evenly as possible of course this isn't gonna reach all the way so I have this brass drift and I'm just gonna go around and of course it's not gonna let me go completely down on the bottom side well it's pretty close it sure is just want to get it even with the head and we got this metal piece right here coming around right so the good thing about the end of this brass drift you know it's it's thick so it's not going to accidentally go into the ceiling area you definitely don't want to poke anything in there just like we did taking it off because that will ruin the seal so try and get it at an angle to get it down like I said, it's thick, so it's not gonna actually poke in. Um, and then I'll probably, let me get something else that will accidentally poke it in if we're not careful. Okay, I got this punch right here, and I'm just gonna go just on the edge, just to tap it in just a little bit, angling it back so it's not gonna actually go into the the ceiling area and that's pretty much it just to get it straight all the way around so let's do the same thing to the other side clean this up inside there that works get the new seal get this thing open um, and let's just get a little bit of oil inside there run it around and make sure that it's not Rolling the seal, push it in. Oop, I don't want to do that. We want to get it even. Okay. Yeah, let's go on. Oh, there goes my light. Okay, that's even on top. Let me find out what I did with that other punch. Push it from the bottom. This goes in just a little bit. And that is it. That is in. Okay, now the fun one. I need to figure out how to get that thing out. So what I'm probably going to do is try and um, pull this key out. Um, you can get a pry bar. I don't know if I can get y'all down in here to even see this. Um, you can get a pry bar and go in between the case and 
this to try and pull that up, but you gotta be careful because you'll crack stuff. You'll crack this case, you'll crack the um, sprocket, and then you gotta replace the sprocket. So uh, I'm gonna have to fight with this and see if it's actually gonna come out. Okay, I got it out. And I've been fighting for this with this thing for a while. This thing was rusted to the crankshaft and I was uh, spraying penetrating oil in there and everything. It took me a while to get that key out of there. Um, I had to grab it, uh, to put it on the lift and actually grab it from the bottom side uh, with a uh, pair of vice grips. Where's the key? And um, and then pry on that and get it out. Uh, you can see it. it has a taper on the bottom right there and, and one side. That, that's the side that goes in. Anyway, got it out. And uh, I, hopefully, as you saw, you know, once I was able to get it out, then I was able to, oops, I just dropped it. Then I was able to um, put a, uh, uh, my uh, pry bar into this groove right here and uh, lightly tap it and I barely got it to just barely turn a little bit to one side and a little bit to the other side I kept putting penetrating oil into where the keyway was and just back and forth and back and forth till finally uh, hopefully you saw it it just started spinning and it came loose it's like oh thank god because <laughs> I've been fighting with this thing for for a while uh, so now let's get that seal out and uh, let's get it replaced Okay, I got that all cleaned up, but before I get the seal off of here, I am gonna get some emery cloth. I'm gonna go around this, try and clean it up. So now I'm gonna mess it up. Yeah, I'm getting penetrating all everywhere. Um, so I'm gonna get some on this <clears throat> piece of emery cloth. I'm just gonna kinda clean this up some. Because it had a lot of rust on it. Just the best that I can. It's not to be perfect. I just want it to be a lot easier. Cleaned up. And, you know, stuff like that. Is it even doing anything? Yeah. Uh, let me get a rag. Oh yeah, that's better. You know, that'll work. I'll do the same thing to that sprocket. So now, let's see if we can get this seal out without messing anything up. Uh, and, oops, I'm gonna do it the exact same way, the wrong way. So don't do what I do. 
I'm coming in here. I'm going to go up. Hopefully I'm at an angle that I can, I don't know, we'll see what happens. I definitely do not want to scar the cr crankshaft. Oh, it's coming. Just don't gouge the crankshaft. Just, hmm. I mean, it's, it's easy for you, to, for me to tell you, don't do what I do, <laughs> and then I'm here doing it. You know, this is the wrong way to do it, but it just works better. I'm trying to get up in there without pushing down, I'm kind of prying up towards it. Come on. Oh, that's what I don't want to do. I mean, it's coming, but it's going back in. Just give it some time to work itself out. Okay, let me see if I can grab it on the other side. No gouging. Gouging is bad. Okay, there I got it. Okay, it's off. No gouging. All right, let's see if we can get the new seal on. Try and push this rag in here. I honestly don't even know if y'all can see what's going on here. I hope so. New seal. Double bag. Come on, get out of there. Well, what the? I mean, how? Okay. Just gonna get a little bit of oil. Stick it around the lip here. And Try and get it on without letting it roll that seal. And this, this one is kind of tough. Come on, wait. This is the right seal, right? This, this is the wrong seal. Are you surprised? I'm not. This is the seal that came out of it. This is the seal, I don't know if you can tell. This, <laughs> it's, it's not the right size, okay? Yeah, this is too big. <sighs> it's ridiculous, it's stop. It's what I wanted to try and prevent before when that one seal wasn't coming in, but. Down to O'Reilly's oh, 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 Precision Bearing and Seal. It's a, it's a good brand. And this is exact match. You probably can't tell. <laughs> this one's all kind of broken up or whatever. 
foot. The seal that we we're trying to put in, and the seal that we're gonna put in, and you see the difference there. Anyway. So, uh, thanks to uh, Parts Guy, you know, you got that one parts guy that you wish you could just go to every single time, but you can't, you know, so you gotta deal with stuff like this. Thanks to the parts guy who went ahead and did all the measurements and stuff and called around and found this seal at O'Reilly. So we're not gonna stop, we're gonna finish this. So let's get in here and put this thing together. Okay, let's try this again. Get the new seal. Put a little bit of oil on the lip. Get this down in here and try, try, try not to. Yeah, it's just like that. Just like that, the seal went in. We got seals going in, we got big seals, little seals, cam seals, crank seals. They're trying to put a rear main seal in the front seal. This seal fit. Okay, that is perfect. Let's see if I can knock it in. Hmm, okay. Uh, figure out how to get this in on the bottom there. I mean, it's pretty much in. I ain't got room. Now, pushing it with my fingers ain't gonna work. That's actually moving. I don't wanna push it anymore on top here because it's already flush. But on the bottom. I need to get something. Something that. <laughs> I can't really see it. Not gonna work. Nah, the camera's in the way. So, yeah, let me um, let me mess with this. See if I can get it in. Okay, I was able to get it in. I held a socket on there. I was able to swing the hammer and get it in. So it looks good. Hopefully, it's good. If it leaks, then uh, we'll just ignore it. So, um, let me get this, let me get this ready. Okay, this is the key, and you can see it has this right here, it's tapered, tapered up, hopefully you can see that. And so that's gonna go down. I'm gonna stick this into the keyway. Is it gonna stay? Come on, get in there. Okay. I'm just gonna stick it right, up, right there. Um, I did um, get some emery cloth on the inside of this, so that's what I wanted to do first before I stuck this thing on. So stick it on there. Make sure that's in all the way. <clears throat> and I know the see these holes right here. You could put um, a screw through there. It goes all the way through. You know, you could uh, put a screw in there if you had a puller that would fit on here. You know, it would help pull this thing off. I don't have that, so I had to result, you know, resort to prying the thing off carefully without messing it up. And I'm just gonna tap on this just a little bit just to lock it in. All right, now 
we just need to get uh, this right here needs to line up with that arrow right there um, but let's get the rest of this on we can get the uh, timing belt on we can get this thing straightened out first I need to replace this spring so what is going on here loosen that so there's that spring right down inside of there I'm not sure if you can even see that um, so let me grab it with this oh, come on get off of there okay sometime today there yeah, it just flew off great so let me find the new spring hello spring spring where are you this is the new spring there's an actual spring inside there so it's going to go on like this the hook it over there and just kind of let it sit like that oh no that's the wrong way goes this direction yeah that's the way the other one was so hooks from underneath and an area that y'all cannot see I try and grab the spring with this right up on here without letting it go and having it shoot off okay it didn't shoot it didn't shoot so there it is right there So um, now I can push the tensioner back. Um, what are we gonna push back? Where's the pry bar? One on. Where's my wrench? There, what's going on with the tools? Okay, I'm gonna push this back. Actually, I'm gonna loosen this up a little bit. That's nice. Yeah, I'm at the wrong angle to do this. So let's just do it off the crank. There. Is this going the right way? Yeah. Okay. So now tension completely relieved at this moment and now we need to focus on these get the exhaust side it says E right there exhaust straight up of course it's not exactly straight we will tighten it and then we will Straighten it out. Hold backups on the camshaft. Torque this down. Torqued. Perfect. Other one. Okay, intake side, we're looking at the eye right there, intake side, goes up into the dowel pin. Come on, get on there. Put that on, holding backups, torque wrench. 
done. Okay. Now let's get the timing belt on. Some of these will actually show an arrow pointing the direction it should go. This one doesn't have an arrow, but I usually put it so that when I'm looking at it from the front of the vehicle, I can read the numbers. Um, and I do that on all belts. I don't know why. Does it really matter? Well, maybe. Probably not. So I want to stick this on here. And I can turn, well, let me see. Should be able to turn the crank just by, nope, it's not gonna work like that. Okay, let me uh, get something on that crank pulley down there so I can actually turn it. Okay, I tried to get this lined up the best I could. Right, uh, so I got the E exhaust side straight up, I intake side straight up, and there's an uh, area in here where you can look, but we can't see because we got this bracket in the way. The bracket's actually holding the thing in place. It was not easy to do. The bottom, let's see, I can show you this right there where that arrow is. That is where it's lined up with that notch. Okay, so that's what we needed to do to get the timing belt lined up. Set this up right here. Now, timing belt, new belt, not old belt, new belt. Come on, get on there. Get that out of the way. That up on there. And see if we got some slack down here. So I need to try and, and I got lights flying everywhere. Uh, this is gonna be the hard part because it's not lined up perfect uh, okay, all I can do is pull this. This is not. So it's either going to be perfect or off a notch. I need to figure out which way I need to turn this thing right here. Oh, this is the wrong thing. Okay. Actually, I think I need to go, wait. That was the right one. Need to go this way. Come on. Okay. I need to loosen this. need to move like a, a hair it's gonna jump it's not gonna be right it might not be right anyway I knew that was gonna happen but Move this this way, tighten that up, hold it in place. I used to have some clamps I used to put on here. I don't know what happened to those, it's been too long. Stick that on. Okay, now our crankshaft is off a tooth, and I can tell just because of the way that it is. 
So, I'll show this to you, because, yeah, I don't know if you can see that. I don't even know, what are we looking at? It's, it's off a tooth. The crankshaft is off a tooth. So, but the camshafts are perfectly in place. So, you can't just slide the thing. The good part about it is I can, since the camshafts are in place properly, I can stick this back on and tighten it down. Am I going the right way or not? Nope. When this thing's upside down, it goes the opposite direction. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't have an upside down and the right side up. It's just there. Okay, there's a little bit of slack right here. That's okay. Pull the belt off. Turn the crankshaft back. So that, oh, no, of course. I'm gonna turn it back a little bit more. And of course it's loosening the bolt. <laughs> it's just, it's just gonna fight me no matter what. So try to tighten the bolt, bring the crankshaft back to where it belongs, right there. See if we can move the belt one tooth over. I think I got it. Stick it on here. Stick it over the tensioner like that. That's on, that's on, that's on. So I am going to loosen this. Um, there, now the spring is pushing it, all right, now loosen this up, get this off of here, so Hopefully you can see it, probably not. This, that mark right there is supposed to line up with that. And then it's the same way on this other side. This mark right there lines up with that. They're lined up. Um, so, and that's lined up down there. Now, set this up. Come on, stay there. Stay right there. So I'm gonna crank this thing over. So it's a gasket from the thing. So two revolutions, two revolutions of the crankshaft to one revolution of the camshaft. I can hear compression. So I am fighting compression a little bit. By the way, I do have this thing in neutral. Because <laughs> if it wasn't, we wouldn't be able to turn this. Let's make sure that it lines up. Like I said, two revolutions of the crankshaft. And right there. 
Okay, intake, exhaust lined up here, intake right here, exhaust, exhaust side, intake side. This is not too tight. Matter of fact, I'm gonna push on it a little bit and then I'm gonna tighten this tensioner down. So 14 millimeter wrench. And if, usually if you get timing belts too tight, they just make noise. Okay. That's it. That was easy, right? <laughs> oh my God, it's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> because it should be easier than this. It's, this is taking way too long, you know? <laughs> but uh, that's okay. Um, let me just throw all this stuff back together and we can get that valve cover on and uh, I'm going to clean up those timing covers and uh, get those put on, get the uh, crank pulley put on, just uh, basically opposite of what we did taking it apart. Pretty much the same thing, we just do the opposite, right? Just walk backwards. So, uh, let me get this stuff. In case you're wondering, three, two, one, four. Four, it even says right there, four, all right. Two. 
And five. I mean, one. There it is. And finally, stick this back where it belongs since we're not gonna be messing around over here anymore. Don't touch. That way she don't break. So, this vehicle, it has three, or is it three? Got three radiator hoses, uh, upper hose and two lower hoses. And of course the parts department gave me two hoses. I told them I need uh, upper and lower radiator hoses. So let's figure out which ones we got. I'm pretty sure we got this one right here. And my guess is the other one is the one down there rather than the one that's back there. <clears throat> and this one down here, we will put it in the air and we'll get it from below. Uh, let me see. Nothing left in the box. So this definitely does not go there. This one, maybe, something like that. Yeah, so here's the upper hose. And these don't come with clamps. So we gotta move the clamps over from the old hose. So let me find the old hose and move it over to this and get this on and lift it up in the air and get the other one on and then we'll get some cooling in here and then we'll be done. Um, so let me do that. All right, let's get this out of here. And that, maybe, that, that, like that, 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 gotta be that. Nailed it. Okay. Let me get some, something to spray on here. Where's, where's something, some rubber care right here. Just gonna spray a little bit of rubber care in here. A little bit in there. Helps it slide in place. Just like that. Okay, that's a lot nicer. So this has got to be the one that goes down below. It's probably got cooling in it. So let's uh, get this in the air and switch this one out. Okay, I forgot about this. Got to get this into place. <clears throat> and of course it's under tension because the vehicle's down. So. I need to, I don't know, use a pry bar on this thing, move it over and up, something like that. I'm gonna need like three or four hands. Um, get this started, could act like a hand. And then I need to do it on this side too, or y'all can't see, but it still needs to get done. Come on, get in there. Start to tighten these down. That's it. Kind of in the way. A 
this hose right here. What we're going for. It is stiff. It's not as bad as the upper one was though. This is in the way. So get that out of there. I need that. Okay, let's see how much coolant is in here. Yeah, I knew it was gonna be coolant. Hopefully not much. There's some. This hose goes to a pipe, which weaves its way around and then goes to another hose, which goes to the, the uh, water pump or block or thermostat or something. Come on, get out of there. I guess you can't hear it crunching. Like it's about to rip. Okay. Let me get this clamps move over to the new hose. All right, I got some rubber care in there and hopefully help this thing slide in place. too high right there that's good okay <clears throat> she's done looks a lot better a lot cleaner than it did when we first started so that's uh, pretty much it I am going to get this cover put on right now Getting this uh, cooling system evacuated. And while we're doing that, there's something back here that I want to talk to you about. So look at this. This is the battery. And batteries in these things, uh, this one does not have a, uh, it doesn't have a hold down, right? So it can move around, you know? And uh, sometimes when they do have a hold down, just as bad, if not worse, as a matter of fact, it can be devastating to this vehicle, especially uh, if you have a battery in the back. Uh, I mean, no matter what, you always want to have some kind of hold down to keep the thing from flopping around. So just to tell you why, this is a positive cable and right, this is the frame. Okay, you got the negative cable in and it's going to the frame right there. Plus then it goes down this harness. This harness goes way back, you know, this is, it goes to the main harness. It's the main harness that goes right down the center of the vehicle, all the way to the front, into the dashboard, and into the, the engine compartment. It's everything. It's the everything harness. So I've seen one of these before and it was devastating uh, because the vehicle uh, was being driven by a college kid and the vehicle was you could tell it was well cared for it had some aftermarket parts and stuff on it and um, uh, it was uh, the kid's dad's pride and joy that he let him take to college and um, so um, 
what happened was, uh, I think the kid uh, replaced the battery, went to AutoZone or someplace like that, and he got a new battery, put it in, and he it had a hold down. Hold down goes like from back here all the way across, and it goes down here. It was not put in correctly. It wasn't holding anything. It was just kind of dangling across, and this thing could slide like this. Didn't have a cover right here. And what happened is he turned the corner, the thing slid, and it got stuck underneath the hold down. The hold down was, was, you know, of course grounded right here. And what that does is it grounded the positive to the, the vehicle. And the battery did not explode. It started to melt every single ground wire in the entire vehicle. And this ground wire right here, all the way going down, completely melted, all the way through this entire harness, all the way down between the seats, underneath the, the carpet, inside the dashboard, up into the um, engine compartment. It was completely melted, entire harness. The kid was lucky, the uh, vehicle stalled, he smelled uh, smoke and stuff like that, popped the hood in the, our, the trunk and was able to get this thing disconnected. So he got lucky that way, but when the insurance company came and we did an estimate on it, figured out it needed an entire new harness, a harness that uh, I believe we could not get uh, because they don't make them anymore. Now, there's aftermarket companies that make all kinds of harnesses and stuff, and uh, there's a lot of enthusiasts that love these vehicles, so I'm sure that you could probably find something. As a matter of fact, that's what I, what I was even saying at the time. But the insurance company, um, they um, said, no, you know, that's way too much. They're not going to do it. Uh, so they totaled the vehicle, and it was a beautiful vehicle. I mean, the, the uh, customer, the the uh, guy's uh, dad had spent a lot of money on it and done a lot of cool things to it. I think the thing even had a roll cage in it. Um, but yeah, it was devastated. Devastating to that vehicle just because the, the um, battery hold down clamp was not put on properly. Um, I know I'm kind of babbling and this this uh, <laughs> video is way too long anyway, but this is just something I need to let you know, you know, if you have one of these vehicles or if you have a vehicle that has a battery in the back, okay, you need to get some kind of a hold down clamp, you know, get something because that's not much of a distance between there and here. It's just, it, you know, besides the vehicle can possibly catch on fire, burn down, kill somebody. I mean, I don't know, but just be safe, all right? That's all, I need. That's all I'm saying, just be safe. Let's get some coolant in this thing and uh, see what happens. Okay, I got coolant in there. I got it sitting in here. Let's start it up and see if it runs. That's it, I mean it runs, so that's good. We need to take her out on the road and see how she performs though. But uh, I need to get this thing up the operating temperature, uh, let the thermostat open, get all the uh, air bubbles burped out of it, and uh, then we'll, uh, we'll take her out, see what happens. All right, let's see what we can do with this thing. Clutch feels good. So, um, AC doesn't work. Airbag lights blinking. It probably needs an airbag control unit. That's common with these. There was a lot of cobwebs and stuff. And underneath this, you know, I was uh, debating on uh, whether this uh, vehicle had been sitting around. I think maybe it had. It had a lot of cobwebs and stuff underneath it now we need to go and blow the cobwebs out of it so let's see let's see what happens oh yeah 
Ooh. Yeah, you can tell the brakes haven't haven't been doing much lately, except sitting around. Five speed manual transmission, no problem. And the clutch is not slipping, it's just not uh, making any noise, it's not wobbling and uh, vibrating or anything like that. <sighs> Got good oil pressure. It sounded like I had a, like a lifter that was tapping and stuff when I first started. And I, I thought that these engines have uh, solid tappets, I think. So that makes me think, oh man, needs to do a, uh, need to do a valve lash adjustment. That's a heck of a job. But uh, it went away after uh, running it for a little while. I ran away after trying to turn the AC on, which isn't working. So it's definitely a work in progress, this vehicle, but I mean, it's it's smooth. The, the um, tires feel good. Um, I had to put air in them. They're all really low, but uh, it's, it doesn't feel like they got uh, flat spots in them or anything like that. It's pretty smooth. Uh, brake rotors aren't warped, uh, engine's running good, transmission's shifting good, clutch is good. Of course, we put that, um, that new uh, master and slave cylinder uh, combination in there uh, for the clutch a while back. So, uh, everything is good. Well, there you have it, guys. Um, this um, timing belt um, and drive belts. We didn't replace the drive belts, but we had to take them off. Uh, cam seals, crank seal, um, the the crank position sensor on the camshaft seal. Uh, it's all done. Um, working fine. Uh, vehicle's running good, um, and it's all good. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I know this was a long video. I'm sure it's a long video. And um, I appreciate the heck out of each and every one of you. Uh, thanks for sticking around. If you have not liked and subscribed, do that. And I will see you in the next one.